Good morning. I'm the cheap body man, Randy, as some people like to call me. So this morning, I'm going to compare the ELAC debut B6 versus the B6.2. This is the new one. It's been out for about two years, but it's the new one. So come on in, have a cup of coffee, and let's talk about audio. So, I got this, first of all, please subscribe. We're getting some subscribers, and I need more. We need more. Come on, let's build a community together. Let's do it. So, I got these just recently, a couple weeks ago, and I did a first impressions video, and on that first impressions video, I said that these are awful bright. Bright means trebly. Lots of trouble, maybe even unbalanced. That probably was, that wasn't probably, that was an unfair assessment. I let them run for a while and that brightness and the trouble came down quite a bit and it balanced out very well with the speaker. That leads me into burn-in. Burn-in or break-in or however you want to call it is a theory that speakers brand new speakers headphones really even amps and electronics out of the box won't sound as good as they do after a while of playing and a while depends it could be 12 hours it could be a hundred hours or even 200 hours and the higher you go up in price in the audio file chain i think the more that they're going to say their components need to break in. Maybe. I don't know. Some people say you don't need burn-in. Some people say that it's not going to affect the sound. I kind of used to be in that camp, but I will say through experience that that is not the case. Um, my first experience was that is a set of Focal um, car speakers. When I first got those and put them in the car, and I have a sub in the car, I had to cross the the um, the front front and rear speakers over at about 120 hertz and crossing means you're putting a crossover in you can do this um, on an amp you can do this on your head unit depending upon how good your head unit is and the features that it has so crossover basically means that you're sending the higher frequencies to the speaker or the the driver that should have those higher frequencies, what it's meant for and designed for, and you're, and you're sending the lower frequencies to the subwoofer in this case. Well, I had to cross the, the fronts over about 120 hertz, um, actually about 150 hertz to begin with. And most of the time, a good rule of thumb for crossover in really any application, if it's a full, if it's a full speaker. Now, I'm not talking about crossovers and speaker building. That's something different. We can talk about that later. But crossovers for speakers and subs, a good rule of thumb and a good place to start is at 80 hertz. So you send the low frequencies to the sub at 80 and you send the high frequencies to the speakers at 80. So everything above 80 goes to the speakers, everything below 80 goes to the subwoofer. And in home theater applications, that's actually the THX and THX is kind of the, I don't know, the expert when it comes to home theater. Anyway, I digress. The point is that I ran those Focals for a while in the car and I started noticing that I could continually tweak down the high pass filter on the front and rear speakers after time. And I finally settled around about 90 to 100 hertz. So that led me to believe that, wow, there is burn-in. Burn-in is the thing. On these, I didn't, I didn't burn them in for a long time, but out of the box, they seemed very trebly. And I ran them last night, all night. And it's gotten better. It's gotten way better. It's gotten very similar to, to the originals. So, I think it was an unfair, and I don't think it was an unfair assessment of, of these out of the box. So what are the differences? The differences are where the port is and the drivers. 
On the first gen, the port is in the rear. Obviously, if you can see, on the second gen, the port is in the front. Well, why did they do that? There's a couple of reasons. One is speaker placement. Andrew Jones designed both of these speakers, and by all accounts, he is probably the best designer of speakers for getting the most out of a speaker for the least amount of money. He started doing this at Pioneer with the line that he designed, and he went over to ELAC, and he designed the debuts. Um, from all the reviews that I've seen, everyone would say the Pioneers were fantastic, the debut sixes, were better than the Pioneer, and even the 6.2 are better yet. Do I agree with that? A little bit, a little bit, and it depends upon what you want out of a speaker. The first gen absolutely astounded me, and I said in a previous video that it was something I'd never heard before in a speaker, and not necessarily from the sound perspective, but from a sound stage perspective. Sound stage is how wide the music feels. The sound stage on these extended far beyond where the speakers were actually placed. The sound stage in height, far beyond where the speakers are, and in depth as well. That blew me away. It was a very it was a very 3D experience for me. And it was something that really astounded me. And even to this day, I, I have a few bookshelves and I like to switch them out because I like different flavors, just like in coffee. Sometimes you want a mocha. Sometimes you want it black. Sugar, cream, it just depends. Different flavors. So I like to change out speakers just because I like a change up. And when I change up speakers, it does a couple of things. One, it lets me enjoy a different flavor. But two, it kind of resets my brain so that every speaker after I change it out is almost like a new speaker and if you're buying affordable speakers then obviously you can do this and it's a lot of fun to me it's a lot of fun to continually rediscover the music that I love coming out of different speakers so if your budget allows and that's why I love affordable speakers uh, how much do these cost this is uh, 280 currently on Amazon this one's 230 currently on Amazon and both of that both of those prices I believe represent a very very good value so port placement why port placement matters port placement matters because um, there is going to be sound and air coming out of the port the reason people put ports into a speaker is to allow them to go deeper than they would be on the same size enclosure. So you put a port, the base extends much deeper. A rear port is going to be greatly affected by how close it is to a wall, specifically a back wall and even side walls. So oftentimes, unless you want a very pronounced bass response, the further you pull a rear ported speaker away from the wall, the less bass it will have. Almost always. The closer you get it to the wall, the more bass it will be. And when I say bass, I'm not talking about really tight bass. It can get what people call boomy. Now, uh, speakers also sometimes are designed, uh, oftentimes are designed, to have a different frequency response. A lot of lower end, when I, and I'm not criticizing this, but some low end frequency, uh, speakers have a frequency bump on the low end and a frequency bump on the high end. That's called V shape or U shaped. And rock and roll, um, even when you look at a rock and roll EQ, it's that very thing. There's a bump on the low and there's a bump on the high. And that seems to be what the masses enjoy um, for a speaker. As you get into the audiophile world, um, people desire what they call a flat frequency response. So if you're looking at a frequency response chart, um, it'll come up at the low end, it'll stay fairly straight line, and then go down at the high end. And that's just because of driver limitations. Obviously this cannot go down to 20 hertz. After you get to about 22,000, 20,000 hertz, excuse me, after you get to about 20,000 hertz, you'll see the speaker fall off again. So, 
That's the way speakers work. Audio files like a flat. People that don't maybe have the out of audio file predilection, sometimes they like a little bump, like a little V-shape. Especially if you listen to rock and roll, most people are gonna enjoy a V-shape. And I will warn you that when you are um, A being speakers, if you go to a Best Buy or Magnolia, and you can actually hear two speakers compared, a lot of times a brighter speaker is going to sound more desirable. I would warn against that. Really, there is no, there's no replacement for actually listening to your speakers in your room, in the room that you're going to listen to them the most often. So if you can, I would look into buying speakers that have a generous return policy, put them in your room, and listen to them for, I don't know, 10, 15 days, whatever it is. And if you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, send it back and find something that better suits your taste. So for these, they have a lot more placement options. It means you can get them closer to the wall without getting that boomy bass. Now some people may like that boomy bass. I was able to get a very similar low end frequency response simply by placement. These, about 20 inches from the wall, these needed to be very close to the wall, about six inches. And that's because the bass, lower frequencies, which means the, the response is less directional. And that's why you can get away with placing a subwoofer in not right in between the speakers. You can place it in a corner. You can place it along the wall because those frequencies are less directional. And when you dial in a subwoofer correctly, it will literally sound like the bass is coming from the speakers, even if the subwoofer is placed somewhere else. So, bass frequencies are affected uh, by the room. Really, all frequencies are affected by the room, but bass frequencies, in my opinion, are affected more greatly and more pronounced the closer you put a speaker to the wall. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. So, six inches, 20 inches from the wall, um, got to my ear, a similar bass response. So I think these are would be a good choice if you have limitations with placement, specifically limitations on how close you have to put them to the wall. I think Andrew knew this, and I think he designed it for this because a bookshelf speaker, by name, can go in a bookshelf. I don't necessarily recommend that, but it can. I see these probably being on stands or even on the side of a TV stand. So, and that obviously is going to be closer to the wall. So you can put these closer to the wall without having that boomy base. Now, some people might like that and fine, just shove it as close to the wall as you can. Hmm. All right. So what's next? I also ran a, a frequency generator, a tone generator. You can go to just Google Tone Generator on, um, on your computer. And if you have your computer hooked up to your system, then uh, they're free too. So pull it up, run it, and start at the low frequencies. Number one, it, it gives you a better indication of how low your speaker will go on that specific placement. And these went well below the rated 44 hertz and even at the roll-off. So they rate a, the, a speaker on the low end where it's a specific decibel or SPL level at a frequency. So it's how far down the frequency. I think it's either, I think it's 6 dB or maybe 3 dB. Anyway, that's where they'll rate the speaker. So both these speakers are rated about 44 um, on the low end. They go below that, especially the closer you get them to the wall. Um, I got high 30s, 37, 36 before it really went down to the point where I couldn't hear it. The low 30s, you can hear sound coming out of either one of these speakers. But I will say at 37, they both made sound when they were placed in what I would call an equivalent distance from the wall. This one made 37 hertz at 20 inches. This made 37 hertz at 6 inches. So keep that in mind. I don't really find that I need a sub on really just about any ELAC speaker. On this one, I think you're probably going to want a sub if you really want that extended low end. So when you run a frequency generator or tone generator, the sound should feel like it's going up linearly. So it starts out, mm, goes up in frequency. 
you can tell where a bump is and how the room is really affecting your speaker by if you hear a bump in that frequency as you're going up higher and higher in frequencies. So it'll sound like this. And the bumps that I heard on these were about 110, 115 hertz on this one and about 105 hertz on this one. And that's not a bad thing per se. Uh, that 100 hertz area is kind of a... Um, kind of a punchy area for the bass and I kind of like that but just bear in mind that your room will affect the sound and you can test that uh, in your room by ear you don't necessarily need a microphone and I may get into testing things with a microphone uh, in my room without any type of room treatments and room treatment is things to get that flat line response or get the response that anybody wants. So from a des design perspective, you can kind of tell just by looking, this has more of an industrial look and I kind of like that. It has exposed screws on it, it's black on black. This one as well looks, they both look good to me. Uh, this one has a lot nicer finish. This one has, um, it's not trying to look like wood. This one's trying to look like wood and I actually think it pulls, off, uh, pulls it off pretty well. So there's definitely grain in this. Uh, this one is, they're not trying to make it look like wood. And it's just very consistent. This one has in, inconsistencies. The drivers are obviously different. You can see on the 6.2 that there's a dust cap. On the originals, no dust cap. That was designed to have a better bass response. And when I say better, I mean a more linear bass response and a frequency response that is leaning more towards the audiophile. Yeah. So let's see. This is the more refined speaker. And when I say refined, I mean it's closer to a frequency response that I think audiophiles or people that are trying to get into an audiophile place of enjoyment for their music this is it this is an absolutely crazy fun speaker this one has bigger wider not necessarily deeper but bigger wider taller soundstage this one has a very pinpoint imaging and smaller soundstage. It still has a great soundstage. I would say the soundstage is more, it's stuck between the speakers. It does extend a little bit beyond the speakers, but not like this one. This one just is like 3D. And if you don't have the room or the budget for a home theater system, depending upon your room, you don't need it with the originals. I hear stuff coming from all different directions on this guy. My wife, who is definitely not an audiophile but listens to music, was amazed at this speaker. And that's what I like to do. I like to bring people in that may or may, you know, really may not know about all these things, about imaging and soundstage. And just to see their reaction, and my wife was astounded. She said, how many speakers do you have going in here? Because I have surround and home theater stuff. And I said, just these two. And she's like, it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. Imaging on these is really great. Imaging on this is a little bit less tight than imaging on this. This is more pinpoint. And again, that leads to it's what it's trying to be and really what it is. This one is a more refined speaker. This one, uh, less refined. It's going to give you a a wider and slightly messier center image. Center image is when you sit equilaterally from your speakers, and when I say equilaterally, you sit um, the same distance from your speakers as the speakers are wide. So if the speakers are five feet apart, you sit five feet apart. And that gives you a better understanding and a better idea and experience of imaging. So this one is not quite as tight. It's still good, but this one's tighter. 
and I listened to Hey Jude by the Beatles uh, on my initial impression, and I also listened to it just this morning. This one gives a very definitive where where the sound is coming from. Now, this one just kind of throws it all over the place, and I think it's less accurate, but it's also, in my opinion, a little bit funner. So, bottom line, if budget is your concern, get these. These are 230 minus 280 $50 less expensive. If you're just coming from like a Polk or lower level clips, get these. It's going to be a completely different experience and it's going to be a lot of fun for you. If you are looking for more of an audiophile experience, get these. Um, the frequency response on this is bumped on the low end and the closer you get it to the wall, the more pronounced that's going to be. The frequency response on this one is flatter, um, more, more refined. Fun. This one's still fun, but a little bit less fun. Towing in. I had to really tow these out. And tow in means how, how directional the speaker is to you. I'd really tow these out initially because it was too bright for me. Now that's settled way down. So I can tow these in really about the same amount. And I don't know. I like that. If you're ever in a situation where you have a speaker and it's too bright for you, just don't point it as directly at you because higher frequencies are very directional. All frequencies kind of go out from here, especially for high frequencies. Low frequencies kind of go out almost in a circle circle so if you have a, a bright speaker tow it out for me if it's too bright if you like that tow it closer into you that's really all i have to say about these two they're both very good speakers but they're both very different different speakers it's really what you want it's it's what your budget will allow but i mean if fifty dollars don't let $50 be the deciding factor for you. Just save up a little bit if you want this. And I just got the debut reference in, and I listened to them this morning for the first time, and that's a very good speaker. This one sounds closer to the reference speaker than this one does. So if you've heard the reference um, or you've heard any of these, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this one is just a more refined speaker. And some people will say that's better. I don't necessarily think that's better. It depends upon what you want. Funner, bassier, uh, mid-range is both good on, on, on both these speakers. And that leads me into what do I listen to when I test my speakers? Well, on these, for mid-range, I listen to Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell songbook. And obviously, that's an acoustic, just him and a guitar. I think he has the best voice in rock and roll. And they're both they're both amazing. This one's mid-range is a little bit stepped back from this one. This one's a little bit more forward. Not a ton more forward. Bottom line is I think Andrew Jones really does mid-range well. It's just really good. And if you're coming from a Polk or Eclipse or a uh, a lower level Sony, then you're really going to be able to tell a difference. There's richness in the vocals on both of these speakers. This one's a little bit more forward, ever so slightly, but there's richness. I think Andrew does mid-range very well. Uh, for dynamics, I listen to Metallica S&M 2. Highly recommend. Highly recommend both these records. And for separation. So this, since there's a symphony with it, can get very complicated. There's a lot going on. If you listen to this and you can continue to hear the separate instruments, then that's a good indication that the speaker can handle that, obviously. This one doesn't handle a lot of inf instruments as well as this one. I'm not saying this one is bad. I'm just saying this one is better for that. They're both dynamic. This one's a little bit sloppier. 
a little bit less refined on the low end than this one. So again, it comes down to what you want. I think both of these are an absolute value. Even at, even at retail, these are an absolute value for what they are. Which one you get is up to you and what listening, what listening style you like. What do you like? What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to a lot of rock and roll. So a little bit of bump on the bass is just fine for me. Oh, there's another record I listen to. Shocking. It's Metallica. Metallica Black Album. The way that album was recorded is slam on the bottom end, bright on the top end. So it's a very V-shaped recording. And if a speaker is on the brighter end, that top end on that record is going to be almost painful. Both of these handled that record very well. This one it was more visceral because you have even a harder punch. This one was more refined. You still hear the punch on this one. It's just not in your face. It's a good, that's a good album to determine whether or not, whether or not your speaker's too bright. At higher volumes, both of these speakers did great. Uh, they both uh, are balanced with this one having a little bit higher bass response. If you want less bass response from this one, pull it out further from the wall. But you're going to have to get probably 36 inches from the wall for this bass response to, to settle down uh, a little bit to be a more audiophile um, type of sound. And still, this one's going to have a little bit more bass punch. You want more bass from this one? Shove it closer to the wall. So... You may have noticed the debut reference. I'm going to give you, you and myself, a initial impressions of the debut reference. I hope you like this channel. I hope you subscribe and I hope I bring you value. If I bring you value, please subscribe. It helps me. It's going to help me on a variety of fronts, but I also have Amazon links. Once I hit a certain amount of subscribers, if you purchase things through those links and purchasing through those links does not cost you anymore. You will have the same price if you went on that link than if you didn't go on that link. So once I get to a certain number of subscribers, I get a small commission if you buy it through those links and that will help me to buy more products. So please subscribe. Please like the video if you liked it. Please like the video if you didn't like it. Please subscribe if you don't like me. Subscribe if you like me. Please subscribe. So which one am I keeping? Obviously I'm keeping this one because I've had it for a while. I don't know if I'm keeping this one. And it has nothing to do with how good the speaker is. It's because I have the debut reference. And I will say, this one sounds closer to the debut reference than this one does. Davy Reference is a $600 speaker. This one sounds more like it. So I hope you like this video. Please come back. Come back, watch the Davy Reference uh, initial impressions video. I have a lot of other videos up there, everything from IEMs to Bluetooth receivers to amps and of course speakers. So I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.